Okay, so this is a fish knife that's been all taken apart. I don't think I, I filmed me taking it apart, but uh, I've taken it apart. I've done some sanding on it. You can see the different liners here. And here's one one blade here. I know I have soaked it in evaporust once and got rid of a lot of rust. Here's the back springs. I've really worked hard on those. It, as you can see, it looks like there's still a little bit of patina or rust down in there, no matter how much I sand. So I'm going to give them another soaking now that I've sanded on them. Let's see if I can get rid of some more of that. Here is the secondary blade, the fish scaler, hook to gouger, cap lifter. And this is what the removable bale looks like. You can see I don't think I got that one soaked because there's still rust on that. So we need to remove that. And uh, here's the big thing. Here's the covers. And as you can see these covers, and I kind of showed it in uh, the restoration I did on on uh, J.O. Ventures toothpick. No, Barlow. Granddaddy Barlow. These covers slide on and they hook here with these little tabs. And I was always afraid of taking these apart, but now that I know how to secure them again, I'm not so uh, afraid of it, I guess, is what you would say. So they just would, um, yeah, got the wrong side. But anyway, they just slip on and hook into these little pieces here. Must be this one. It would just slide on and hook. So, but the other thing was, on this, I've always been afraid to take these covers off. But you see there's rust there. That means there's rust underneath this. So I'm going to take the bold step, since I have this knife all taken apart. If I'm going to put it back together, it doesn't do any good to leave a rusty spot underneath this cover. So these or original covers are going to have to come off. And that's what I'm going to be doing. So, hey, just real quick, let's do that. Let's just do that really, really quick. Now, this knife is a Joica out of Ireland. And we can talk more about Joica. But let me see here. What am I going to use? You can see it's just kind of like a laminated paper type stuff and I talked to the or the knife doctor suggested I think it was him anyway you can probably just get some wallpaper or something that looks like this and we can get new covers on but see there see how it looks underneath see all that rust if I'm gonna to go to all these steps I might as well <laughs> do it all the way right even though I hate to take these original covers off. But they get old and brittle. Oh yeah, see that? So let's do that. Let's give this all a really good soaking. And I will be doing a video on the uh, total restoration of this knife. So here's my evapor rust. Throw those in there. And I'm going to go ahead and just throw those parts back in there again. Give them a good soaking. Like I said, I've taken it down this far. We might as well do it the whole way, right? I've let these knife parts soak for, oh, about two hours, I suppose, in the evapor rust. So I thought I'd share taking them out and then we'll uh, take a look at them. You can see there are all kinds of stuff down in the bottom of this evapor rust. I'm going to rinse them off here first. And then we'll take a look at them. And you can see the results of the evapor rust there. All the material down in the bottom. And we'll look at these covers here first. I wanted to see what we can wipe off. See there, some of this we can just wipe off. So that's what we got. Let me 
There's that one. Most of that rust has come right off, hasn't it? Wipe on it a little more here. And there's real heavy rust on this. See if we wipe off some of that. I'll probably have to do some sanding on this yet. That looks like a little bit of rust there on that one tip. And this is what I was interested in these areas like right there. Oh yeah, look at that. See how it wiped a lot of that off? Even though I had sanded these, it's still on there. Okay, so I'm just going to finish cleaning these off and I'll sand on them a while and we'll take another look at them. Well, I want to give you a little bit of an update of where I'm at on the restoration of this fish knife. I've been doing some experimenting. Um, I bought some contact paper and the only thing I could find that was decent was white. I didn't like the other patterns. Um, maybe I can look online and find some, uh, you know, colored contact paper. But in the meantime, what I have done is, well, I started out with uh, just some yellow paint, some of the, you know, testers model paint like this. I put a white base coat down, and then I used some black and swirled around with it, you know, trying to get some swirls. I'm trying to kind of recreate what one of these knives would look like the covers the original covers something like this here like the yellow cracked ice so I'm trying to get something that looks like it's from the period so there's just the yellow and black and it ended up looking like a pea green or something it looked ugly so I tried a couple other little things here I got some red on top of it and I swirled some gold around on top of it I don't know I'm just going to keep playing with some colors and then I plan on spraying some uh, clear acrylic coating over it to help protect the paint. I don't know. We're just experimenting here. I did get one of the covers all cleaned up. One thing I wasn't prepared for is you see these, you can see the two holes right there. That's where these go. So somehow I'm going to have to get those bent back down without breaking them. And, of course, they, they slide into one of these liners here. So I wasn't prepared for that. The next time I have to take a, a knife apart like this, if I know they have these kinds of tabs, I'll take it apart differently. But I didn't know how it was constructed. So that's just one of the challenges I'm going to have to overcome. But even with the white, just the plain white, it looks pretty nice, I think. Um, so hold on just a second. Want to get some of those paint panels moved out of the way. Here's the rest of our parts. I let them soak for, well, overnight for about 12 hours. There is no more rust on these. Um, I've wiped them all down with some alcohol here. Get them all cleaned up. The challenge on putting this cover on again, on this one, on this side, is it's got this fish knife. Now, a lot of them, they're, it's a separate little shield, and they got tabs that bend over on the inside but you can see this one is just pressed in there so I'm gonna to have to get that cover on there and then as best I can cut around that so that's gonna be a challenge but I think the covers are looking very nice so yeah see these pieces I got a little more sanding to do on this but this looks a lot better than it did things are cleaning up and let me see, where did I put my, oh, here's my blade. I've been working on this blade, sanding on it. You can see the, uh, the imperfections. You see that swirly, squiggly stuff along there. It was much more pronounced. What I did is I bought a, oh, where is it? Hang on. Wow, I got stuff spread out all over the place. But, <laughs> I got this Gator Super Sponge 400 grit and so I've been using this and it is it's starting to clean those clean this blade up pretty good and it's starting to get rid of those imperfections there but this makes it a lot easier to to sand it's a lot easier on the hands again just doing it like this 
This blade's really starting to clean up. But I am, I normally don't uh, spend a lot of time on blades other than getting them cleaned and the rust off of them and that. I don't try to get them mirror polished anymore. Or, But on this one, since I'm doing a pretty much a total restoration, well, I'm going to do my best to see if I can get this blade looking brand new. So that's what I'm working on. And of course, I got to start trying to pin it all together. Well, if you've made it this far into the video, why, congratulations. You've seen uh, quite a few of the steps that I've uh, been taking trying to get this fish knife restored. Unfortunately, I ran into a snag. I tried to repin the knife, and well, it was an epic failure. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we always learn through our failure, so I'm going to keep trying on it. So I just wanted to let you know from this point on, you're going to see me try to repin the knife and... Uh, well, maybe you'll get a chuckle out of it at, at my expense after all, but that's okay. We're learning. Um, I just had to take a break from everything and uh, come out here and enjoy nature. Come up here to one of my favorite little marshes in the stream and we've had so much rain. The, the streams have filled up again and it's just beautiful out here tonight. So, except for the mosquitoes. Yeah, I know we're supposed to love all of God's creatures, but... It's awful hard with them mosquitoes, ain't it? <laughs> but anyway, so fair warning from this point forward, watch if you dare. This is kind of where we stand right now. Of course, I got the white uh, vinyl on there for the cover. Still kind of working on that. I've been sanding on this blade, and it's starting to get into shape there. This was the real bad side. Getting a pretty good mirror polish. I still got those blemishes. I don't know, boy. I've sanded for at least a good hour on this thing, off and on. But it's getting there, I think. So we'll see about that. But I got to start worried about repinning here. And I ran into a, oh, kind of a head scratcher here. So here's our hole for the pivots and the blades. And I've got these nails here. I'll, I'll cut these off and use these as pins. But, uh, you know, this is about the right size pin. There's just a little bit of wiggle in there. But I think what's happened is the actual knife blade has been used, you know, opened and closed more than on the scalar blade. And you can see the holes worn there. So it's just a little bit larger. So since it's worn, I'll never get a perfect fit. But here's kind of the head scratcher is, so I can get this to fit through here. But then here's the holes that it needs to go through for the various liners. And it's a little tiny, a lot smaller hole. So I don't know if that's because of wear and tear that, that these holes got bigger than that or what. But any, anyway, what I'm going to have to do is find a drill bit basically this size and drill out these holes right here. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm sorry I'm not going to be able to capture all of this because I'm experimenting with stuff and it's kind of hard to, to work on it uh, behind the camera. So uh, I'll try to keep you, uh, you know, in the process as much as well, I can. Well, here comes the fun part. So I got my holes drilled here um, so that the bigger pins will go through. I got the ends of the nails cut off here, about that long. But now it's uh, a matter of trying to assemble it. Now I'm thinking that... See how that sticks out there? That that goes to the outside. So we're going to start here with this one. Let's see. Wait a minute. It's going to be this one. Those go. Nope. That goes to the outside. To the outside. So the bottom cover. That goes to the outside. No. So that one's going there. That's going to be the top. These go to the outside. So we want to start this one here for our little spring. Yep. Okay. Then 
we have the scaler. That's going to go up there. Yep. No, it's going to go. No, I got it backwards here. Let me see. Let's put it this way. But those have to go to the outside. Just like a giant puzzle. Okay, that looks better. Now this is going to go down in here. Okay, I have a spring. And this spring here has to hit that there. So I'm going to put this here. There we go. Now you can see. See how that spring bends out as you rotate that around? Yep. All right. So far, so good. Cross your fingers here. And we're going to go like this. Maybe. Something like, whoops, don't bend it. There we go. Okay, now we got our main blade. It's going to go like that. We got another spring here. Now this is just a two-bladed knife. Just imagine when I go to put a Camp King back together, what that's going to be like. <laughs> and these to the outside again. So we're going to go here, and here. Should go something just like that. Okay. Yep. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this down just a little more, and then I'm going to peen on this and get this one ended, and then poke it back through cut the head off of the nail there and then and then start peening down here's kind of the moment of truth so there's the head of the nail there I cut this one off here I did learn I should cut it a little shorter before I start on this it's easier but as you can see I've got a little rim peened around there so the moment of truth is when I push it down through here is it going to fill that hole and look it does it sure does. So we can clean that up later, but we're going to start with this center pin. I think it's the best place to start just to get the knife back together. When we start to do this down here, it's a little tougher because um, yeah, it's a trick. I've only done a couple of these, and it's been you know a year or two in between each one. The trick is, is you want to tighten it tight enough. you got good snap, but not so tight that <laughs> you can't use it. You can't get the blades open. So... Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this nail off right down about there and I'm going to peen this other side and don't worry I'll show you some of the peening process here in just a minute. Uh, I'm just not set up to be able to film that right I now. I keep starting and stopping this video <laughs> but before I went on too far I wanted to show everybody something. So I've got the, the, the uh, center pin in and then the springs are under tension. So you, as you can see here I've got this one. I'm getting ready to uh, finish peening that end. And I almost forgot. I got this pretty tight. I forgot to line up down here because those springs were under tension. So it's a good thing before I did finish, uh, you know, final pounding here and tightening here, I did get these lined up. So I should be able to get the last pin in there <laughs> after that. So I just wanted to stop and show you that. Remember, yeah, these things are... The springs were under tension, but look. I mean, this isn't even tightened yet, but looky there. I think we're going to have a pretty successful uh, restore here. It's hitting there just a little bit, but again, we're not totally done. But Okay, I'll get back. Remember to how earlier I admonished everybody to go slow when you're doing this pinning? Well, 
I failed to heed my own advice. So I lose a demerit, but <laughs> I got to go in and I ended up peening on this to finish it. Oh, I wasn't paying attention. I was just peening away and, well, I think I got it too tight. The back spring is raising up. But I just think it's, there's no walk and talk to it. So, yeah, it just opens and closes so hard. So, I'm going to take the pin out and we're going to start over on that one.